So in the scientific method approach to solving um, scientific mysteries or just common sense approach, you need to explain uh, what you see with your theory or with your hypotheses that may be kinged, ultimately elevated to a um, theory. So um, in, in light of what we just talked about with the formation of the planets, um, coming from a process known as accretion, can you can you kind of vision where they were? There were kind of there are, I should say, some crumblies left over from the formation of our sun and the eight planets in orbit about it. Those are generally known as those leftovers are known as asteroids and comets. They are still gravitationally bound to our solar system, but they are more random than the planets. Um, Let's see. In fact, those kind of crumblies, leftovers, um, early on, um, as I understand it, even after the, the sun began fusion in its core, so we had the solar wind kind of swept, the, um, especially the inner part of our solar system, um, clean of debris, there was a fair bit of, um, of, of odds and ends leftovers that were... Uh, comets and um, asteroids that were roaming our solar system and they 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 took it out on the planets <laughs> okay so we had a lot of what we call bombardment of asteroids and comets early on in the history of our solar system um, now the difference between an asteroid and a comet comets were formed basically uh, on the other side of the frost line and asteroids were formed on this side of the frost line so that um, asteroids um, la lack those what we call frozen ices like H2O, um, methane, and, um, and ammonia. Whereas comets uh, that were formed beyond the frost line, they have those. They have solid water, uh, methane, and um, um, ammonia. Okay, so uh, so another thing that we know historically is we can look at scarred planets. Uh, a little bit ago I showed you a photograph of Mars, excuse me, not Mars, well Mars too, but I'm thinking Mercury. Mercury is pocked full of craters and um, this is actually uh, an indication of this early time when we had lots of leftovers that were hitting the planets. Our moon is pocked with craters. Um, the Earth, not so much pocked with craters because you know why? It has this what we call plate tectonics. It's geologically active, so it kind of resurfaces those marks of, of bombardment. Um, another thing that's consistent with kind of this, um, uh, this uh, the nebular theory is the fact that the Earth's, our current water then, could conceivably have come from those um, comets as they passed the frost line and brought them and was hitting things, brought them across the frost line towards the sun and were hitting objects, including the Earth. So the Earth has had its fair share of bom being bombarded by comets and asteroids. Not so much now. Things have really kind of calmed down in uh, as far as planets getting hit than it used to be. Um, another thing to explain, and I have a couple slides individually to explain them, but it has to do again with kind of um, early on in the formation of our solar system, we had these extra things kind of roaming the solar system, um, asteroids and comets, because we need to explain why um, Uranus, when it rotates on an, on an axis, why that axis is so tilted to basically lie in the plane of the ecliptic, and why the Earth... Um, the third terrestrial planet has such a beautifully large moon. Okay. Um, starting, well, first off, I think I mentioned that, um, now I don't think this is Phobos and Deimos, but I think I mentioned that the terrestrial planets, and Earth is a terrestrial planet, the terrestrial planets do not generally have moons. This is to say that Mercury, no moon, Venus, no moon, um, Mars, the fourth terrestrial planet, has two moons, but they look kind of like this. And again, these don't look like Phobos and Deimos, but maybe they are. Uh, Mars moons look like they were captured, and actually kind of a captured um, planetismal 
Um, otherwise, no, we'd, we'd call now a, an asteroid. So how come Earth has such a beautiful large moon? Well, uh, we think that um, Earth, can you kind of see this picture here? Earth was smacked with um, early in the, the, um, the formation of our solar system with a planetismal about the size of Mars. Okay, there was an impact or collision. Okay, and then what happened is that um, this says hours later our planet is completely molten and debris splashed out. Okay, so after impact we have ejection of material and a molten Earth. And then you might know what's going to happen is this ejected material actually is going to form the moon. This says less than a thousand years later, the moon's accretion is um, rapidly nearing its end. And there's relatively little debris um, in the moon's orbit about the Earth. So it's impact, ejection, and the moon accretes from that ejected material. Well, Uranus's odd rotation, again, has to do with um, kind of leftovers roaming the solar system early on in the solar system's, um, the history of the solar system. So basically what we think is that Uranus got hit real hard um, and got tilted on its axis because of its, of its whack. So just to kind of summarize the nebular theory we've been talking about, um, so remember, this is the formation of our sun, which is a star, and all eight planets that orbit the sun. Generally, that's called the nebular theory. It starts out as a big old nebula, okay, a big old kind of rotating nebula, and then that rotating nebula um, uh, pulls in on, uh, contracts, and as it contracts, it spins faster, and it forms this disk-like shape. And notice right here we've got um, two types of, we've got kind of a what we call a frost line. And on the inside of the frost line, we can have things like metals and rock go ahead and solidify or liquefy at least. And then outside the frost line, where it's cooler, we can go ahead and the hydrogen containing compounds can also solidify. So then over time, these regions are kind of lanes, materials accreted together making our terrestrial planets, inner terrestrial planets, and outer Jovian planets. And so what we have today looks a little bit like this, where we have, uh, notice I'll draw your attention to this, these little crumblies out here. So these are little crumblies uh, include Pluto. <laughs> Pluto, and Air, Pluto and Eris are out here. And this is called what we call the Kuiper Belt. It's one location for finding comets and icy bodies.